Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I recently realized that I may have applied to more than a thousand jobs in the last six years and I'm talking about jobs that didn't either get back to me or that sent me a rejection message or you know the ones that didn't hire me and i know that this situation is not just about me i know that there are people who have it worse who may have applied to more than these jobs in just one year or less than a year i have applied to about 150 jobs between october to now and i'm still unemployed i've had linkedin since probably this time last year around april last year um grand total of jobs that i've applied to via linkedin 552. That does not include positions that I've applied to like via company website, on Indeed, on Glassdoor, all of those things and like ones that I forgot about and like went on their website. So it made me ask myself three important questions. First, how come everyone is complaining about not getting hired but there are so many job listings on these job platforms? Who is getting the jobs? Second, what actually goes on behind the scenes? Like, what happens after we send our CVs? What do recruiters do? What do they behave like? How do they consider our applications and all that? And third, what can we do as job seekers to get more chances to land a job? So I thought if there is anyone that could answer these three questions, it would be recruiters. That's why today we are going to consult TikTok recruiters and work coaches to answer these three main questions. And I hope that this is going to be helpful to some of you guys. So let's start with the first one. How come there are many job listings? Many job ads out there but everyone is complaining about not getting hired even people with degrees and people with experiences and all that and some people are getting laid off but the job platforms seem to be still full of listings when i was thinking about it i was like where well, it's obvious you know there are so many people looking for jobs than jobs which are out there but then i was like how come there are some job ads that i see which are always there despite the job platforms displaying that there are hundreds and thousands of people have applied to their jobs. So I asked TikTok and I came across this recruiter who said this. They're simply not hiring. I have to tell you this, but these jobs don't exist. I'm a tech recruiter um, and I get ghosted by my company and other agencies we work for and positions we try to fill 90% of the time. I'll have people get first round, second round, third round interviews, even to the point where, yeah, they're gonna figure out the financials and send them a job offer. That doesn't happen. There is no offer. All they do is they're trying to make it look like they're busy and it looks like they're hiring. And then for whatever reason at the end of the road, oh, it doesn't work out. I am literally being told now to don't worry about what hires I get, just worry about hitting my numbers. So that means all they care about is me submitting resumes and that's it. There's definitely something political going on that they're not disclosing on why they are doing this to begin with. But yeah, it's a load of bullshit. Unless you're a rock star and you agree to get underpaid 20 grand, you're not getting an offer. So let's talk about why this is happening and why so many companies are posting these phantom job descriptions that don't actually lead anywhere. Really, the easiest way to understand it is that these companies just look better if there are open job applications and they're not admitting to a hiring freeze. I've even seen recently there have been some companies that will announce that they're doing a layoff and then if you go to their LinkedIn or Indeed profile, they still have dozens if not hundreds of open job applications that are still accepting applicants. So yeah, as you can understand, some job ads that you see on these platforms are actually not legit. Bad news is you are going to lose much time, much of your precious time trying to make your CV look better to apply to these jobs, but you will never hear back from them good news is it's not that you are unemployable or there is a problem with you it turns out it's about the company more than it's about you so that must be good news but then what about companies that are really hiring like for instance what happens when we send our applications through linkedin or indeed or whatever it turns out most of these job application platforms have automated systems that automatically reject some applications not based on the competency or whatever but sometimes depending on your location or 
on the answers you've given. If you've ever applied to a job on LinkedIn, this is how LinkedIn will automatically reject your application. So recently I was trying to hire for a videographer in New York City. And after people apply to your application, you can decide if they're a good fit, maybe, or not a fit. And if you're marked as not a fit, you're automatically going to get sent a rejection email. And I went back on the job listing and I noticed that five people were marked as not a fit. But the thing is, I never marked anyone as not a fit. So I was like, how did, I mean, did I just forget? Did some Googling and no, I didn't gaslight myself. One, apparently there's rating automation setting. And by default, out of country applications are tagged not a fit. This is crazy. Because that means if you're someone who's international, who maybe lives in Canada and you want to work in the States and you don't update your LinkedIn country, doesn't matter. Done. You're not getting selected. I was curious. I was like, well, what other automation settings do I have? And here are the two main LinkedIn automation settings that they give you. One, not a country. Can't even change it. Like I'm clicking, but I can't change it. Second, people who don't meet the screen criteria as not a fit. I can turn that on or off. So these are example screening questions that job descriptions can ask you. And if you don't put the minimum answer of what they're looking for and they have the setting on, boom, automatically not a fit. I can see how that's helpful, but I don't know. It feels weird. So now you know how LinkedIn automatically rejects you. Next episode, let's talk about reposting jobs. Which means if you send 1,000 applications, chances are many of them are not even being considered because this kind of means that if a company has limited resources or if a company has less recruiters and they receive so many applications, they will just take the easy road, which is ignoring the ones which are automatically flagged by LinkedIn or any other job platforms. And also, if you are applying for a job in another country, then chances are you are getting automatically rejected even though you are competent. What I understand from this is you may be, let's say, a US citizen, but you are, let's say, living in another country, but you want to relocate back to the US. So you start applying to jobs in the US or you may be in the US, but you've been to another country before and you used your LinkedIn in another country and you forgot to change that when you came back to the US and you've been sending applications and they have been getting flagged because LinkedIn is considering you as someone who is abroad where you are actually not abroad. It's weird, I know. Let's talk about what actually happens when you apply to a job and you get rejected. And if you don't know me, hello, I'm Farah Shargi. I have worked as a technical recruiter for nearly a decade. I've used seven applicant tracking systems. I will list them here. And I've also worked at these companies as an internal recruiter, in-house recruiter. And I've also worked as an agency recruiter. So I know a thing or two about applicant tracking systems and what actually happens behind the scenes when it comes to hiring. So first and foremost, of these seven applicant tracking systems that I've used, zero, none, actually have any type of ranking system. I have heard of one that does. I don't know any recruiter who actually uses them. When you as an applicant apply for a position, there are these knockout questions that get asked. Now, these are not the questions that get sent to the Department of Labor, such as, uh, your gen like how you identify gender wise, um, your race, etc. Those are not the knockout questions. The ones that are the knockout questions are things like, do you require visa sponsorship? If the company's not willing to sponsor your visa, you're going to get automatically rejected. That's number one. Number two, if you are applying to a job that is considered to be a federal contractor or subcontractor, you have the company has to abide by OFCCP guidelines. And those guidelines state that if you do not meet 100% of the minimum qualifications, you have to be rejected. The other part of the, the rules with OFCCP is that every resume has to be viewed by human eyes. Applicant tracking systems are tracking systems, not decision-making systems. A human is actually reading those. So you can stuff all the keywords you want in your resume, but if your resume is not communicating your business value to that business, why should the business actually hire you to help them make money? How can you judge my abilities to do a certain job based on my skills of writing? Like, I'm an engineer, right? How can you initially judge my engineering abilities based on my writing skills? So while in theory, it sounds like, oh, you know, if you write your CV where then, you know, automatically will make you stand out in the applications. And that's the easy road that many companies are taking. I feel like this is... Uh, not effective at least. I feel like some companies are hiring people based on just the way they wrote their CVs, the way they wrote their cover letters, and they end up hiring people who 
are you know going to get fired or laid off in a year or two years while they initially uh, rejected someone who could have been better for the company who could have made big difference for the company just because he couldn't write his resume well there must be many things that can be done rather than just being like oh this guy is a good writer so let me hire him so then what should we do as job seekers right are we doomed to fail what do recruiters think about what job seekers should do to land a job or an interview at least well uh, this one is a bit challenging because you see different recruiters say different things and they kind of contradict each other so some recruiters say hey yo you know after sending your job application just write an email to the recruiter you know kiss the recruiter's ass so listen up this is what you're going to do to stand out from the rest of the applicants that apply to the same job as you i highly recommend that you reach out to the recruiter after you apply to the job to show your interest because i assure you we're not getting many inquiries this is a strategy i think everyone should try when you're on the job search and even if you get a rejection so what at least you received a reply if you haven't tried this approach already don't worry i understand why you haven't considered it because it's not a conventional way of finding a job a big part of my job is to headhunt and so i spent hours on linkedin sometimes all day so i'm online i'm on linkedin and i'm looking for you i'm looking for the candidates to fill my role so here's something you should know very few candidates actually will send me a message i'm using linkedin to post jobs to send connections to send messages to recruit i'm on linkedin engaging very few will actually reach out to me directly to inquire, to, um, to set up time to chat, to ask a question. Really, I rarely get messages unless it's uh, for a candidate I reached out to personally and they responded back to me. So when you're applying to jobs, an additional step that you can take that not many people actually do is reaching out to the recruiter and introducing yourself. Just tell them you applied to the position and you're excited to hear back and you're hoping to get some feedback. If you're currently seeking employment right now and you're feeling stuck in the job search, go ahead and schedule a call with me and I can help. Another reason is that you didn't take the time to connect with the recruiter and the decision makers before you sent your application in and also to follow up with them, thank you emails. And the problem here is that many recruiters and work coaches and whatever, they have different approaches. I see the comments on some of these videos and some recruiters are being like, yo, actually, I wouldn't want anyone to text me after sending the application because I don't even have time to read all the applications. Now I have to add time to go to read their emails or their dms their personal messages and all that so i'm going to ignore them and actually it gives me ick which makes sense i mean if i was a recruiter too i wouldn't want people to just randomly text me and you know make my inbox full saying things just to kiss my ass so then what should we do as job seekers you may ask well i don't know i don't even think there is someone who knows so I feel like all these coaches, all these recruiters, all these whatever, they're just all mostly saying generic things which may work and which may not work. So my advice is do all, you know, try all that you think can work and see how it goes because it's better to, you know, do something than not just do anything, right? If you are on LinkedIn, I know it's weird and I know it takes time and resources and it's so shallow and all that, but network is very important. And I'm saying this because just this year, I realized how much networking with people, even strangers, people that I don't even know has helped me. Like there are instances that I get random messages from recruiters or from companies offering me projects you know telling me hey you know we want you to work on this project are you free what is your wages and all that just because i added them randomly on linkedin i don't know them don't know where they are from but because i'm a private contractor slash uh, freelancer they know the services that i do sometimes they are looking for someone and they just see my profile there and they are like you know what let's send this to this guy so that's 
first thing that I believe could help, just network with people, even random people, even though I know it's social and some people don't like it, I don't like it either, but it seems like it helps. It does help, but at some extent, of course, there are some jobs that it wouldn't help. I mean, if you are like a freelancer or whatever, I think like it could help. But if you are like actively looking for like a good role in a, you know, company, then it may not be helpful to be honest something else just don't get demotivated like i know you know some people at some point they just kind of give up because they've done so much and they never received any feedback or they never gained anything from it i feel like you never know when your time is coming so if you are like struggling to get a job just keep sending those applications keep applying i'm sure at some point you will get something that's all i had to say in this video if you watched it until here i would like to hear what you have to say so let's meet in the comment section let's chat about it thank you very much for watching the video and thank you very much for all the support to the channel i really appreciate every one of you and as always i will see you in my next video so bye